present day Semanggang. A bustling town with a rich history. One of the roads that you may pass by here is Jalan Michael Pillow. And if you are wondering who Michael Pillow is, please continue watching. My my name is Michael Pillow, and. Um, I was born in 1932, at age of 11 at or, or 10 plus. And I was school at first, school. Uh, and then later on, I went to St. Thomas School in 1947. And I studied in St. Thomas School for three years, 1947 to 1949. And then after that, I went back to Seluk again. Blessed with a long and healthy life, he has seen the era of the White Raja, Japanese occupation, British colony, and finally the formation of Malaysia. Born in 1932, he grew up in Po Ailong House in Malugu, a short distance from Simangang. During those days, his longhouse community was very steep in traditional beliefs and does not encourage their children to go to school. In such a challenging environment, it was due to his huge effort and determination that he managed to complete his Rawat Junior Certificate, the highest level offered in his school at that time. I'm saying, the word is no word for, for our Iban community for school, the word of school no more. That's why our parents don't know what is school to, to them, mm -hmm. right? That's why even all the elders, their parents doesn't like to encourage the students to go to school. Otherwise, it will go away. Even I want to apply for job also, some of my father brother doesn't like me to go to join the, the, the job, you know, especially the native visa. So they said, no, cannot, but Armed with this qualification, he managed to get into government service despite being discouraged by his community. From then on, he began to show his prowess as a civil servant. With his people-friendly approach and never-give-up attitude, he very quickly gained the trust of his bosses who soon entrusted him with difficult jobs that needs negotiating with people. So he was appointed to positions like Sarawak Administrative Officer, District Officer and Resident. In an era where dramatic events were happening at a very fast pace, the young Michael Pillow was called to handle many difficult jobs. He had to serve in many places in Sarawak and oftentimes faced challenging and dangerous situations. Ranging from dealing with people over land matters bringing the Cobalt Commission around and receiving national leaders visiting Kanawit during the early years after the formation of Malaysia, it was all done superbly. Soon, he became very well known and popular in town, which helped him immensely during the confrontation and communist insurgency. Serving as a DO in Kanawit during the communist insurgency was probably the most dangerous phase of his career. As the DO of Kanawit, he headed the District Security Executive Committee. Working closely with the community leaders, he managed to convince the communists in that district to lay down their arms. I got a lot of friends like Chinese, like the Toroma, Hulu, in Kanawite because I, I was there I, as a DO. I used to contact they told me in AP or past him, I said to come back, the government will not, not do harm to them. 
is beta pode to come back to our society that's what my word to all the terma all the my challenge spread in in kadawe thus he managed to bring peace to that district his success almost cost him his life as the communists saw him as a threat to their struggle on one occasion they even attacked his residence fortunately the sentries managed to repel the attack and he was later moved to a safer place to stay abe ko to ba ha ya ko to nga maya nga china iban jamur kau aku mata kita dulu ya jadi minyak tu iban china Semua campur, campur ya. Semua. Aku ingat kita agak nama saya kena baru rumah tu bah. Baru rumah dia pun dia pun ni saya. Kau dah tu kau dah macam apa? Penting ya. Pak belah rumah. Send back. Send back. Something like that. Yeah. So that's what happened. Every time there's a shooting, we have to hide beneath the the bed. There are many, there are many incidents there. Yeah, you know, yeah. even the civilian uh, you know, just married during the war. Yeah. Just married, and the the wife was shot by the communist, yeah. and she died just a day of their marriage. I remember that very well. I, I don't know where's that guy anymore. He's a government servant, so. yeah. I so this is happening. The time in seventy. No, only Tuan uh, Dio then. Tuan right? Dio, uh, who is a Michael uh, Hill, is in danger. But the family also, family members also in danger. They, they threaten to uh, kill them. So when when they were attacking and he was defending, were the communists trying to kill him? Ten years ago, the aim is to try to kill the Dio lah. Yeah, because the Dio is the. So they managed to fend off the attacks. Yeah, the Dio is the the head of. When the Bata Ai Dam was built, Michael was assigned the difficult job of dealing with the community regarding resettlement and acquisition of land. Despite his concerns over the whole issue, he got the job done. When he retired as a resident in 1987, he was quickly roped in to stand for the state election which he won and served for two terms. After his service as a state assemblyman, he was appointed a Temenggong. For his contribution to the state and country, among the awards he received were Ahli Mangku Negara and Ahli Bintang Sarawak. Today, at the ripe age of 91, He still has a lot of plans, and he is going round getting his plans take off. He still go round giving advice to the young generation living in the nearby longhouses, and he has great plans to develop his farm. And the support, guidance, and involvement he gave to his longhouse in Po Ai. Has made it one of the well-known longhouses in Sri Aman Division, with a very good homestay program. Still as jovial and friendly as ever, his enthusiasm has not declined one bit. Thank you for watching this video.